afternoon. How do you guys get your cuts done before anybody else in the NFL? Uh, just by asking, first of all, keep an 11 DB, what you like about the depth and the talent in that group. We've got a lot of guys at the safety position that are very good special teams players, and that can help us on teams, especially at the gunner spot as well as corner. So a lot of them play nickel as well, and they're multi-talented, so it's hard to let them go. You kept uh, four tight ends, and generally they play you know, one at a time in his offense. Is that special teams primarily or with, or with Co? Or like what, what was the well, we'll play some more two tight ends as well. So we need the tight ends, and they're both they're all up and coming. And Cole can play some fullback as well, just for different personnel groupings. We needed them all. As you went through it, is, is there was there a toughest position that was the last cut, or what you had to go through that made the most difficult decision? It was really the cross positions where you, you're weighing the outside backer against the sixth receiver and that type of stuff. But we felt it's hard to get pass rushers in this league, and hopefully we can get them through to the practice squad and bring them up as needed. What do you like about this group that you look at at the 53 when you kind of step back and see how it was all put together um, over the last couple of years? Well, they work hard and they got good chemistry. You know, that's the biggest thing you can see right now. You got to wait till they play to see them play. Obviously, we want to play mistake free football, but coming together as a group as early as they did, that, that's positive. It's a very young team. You were an older team not too many years ago, and now you're one of the youngest in the league. So, you got like three guys over 30. So what's the advantage and maybe the disadvantage of that? The advantage is they can run and practice every day. You don't have to hold too many people out. The disadvantage, obviously, is the experience and them understanding and knowing things as they get ready. Cause you, you've been here as long as I think all but five or six guys on this roster now. I think it's 44 out of 53 were either drafted by the Bucs or, or came in as undrafted guys by the Bucs. How, how much do you like the, the homegrown aspect of this roster? I mean, it's great to have them. That means you're drafting the right guys if they can make the team and contribute. You know, if you're drafting 44 of them and you only got about 15 of them, then that doesn't say a whole bunch. So it says a lot about the front office and the draft process, about the coaches preparing them, getting them ready to play. But you find players everywhere, whether they're free agents or whether they're draft picks, you, you want the best guys on your team. You say a lot, too, about the front office that they're able to do this, not drafting here at the top of, of the draft every year. You guys go towards the bottom. It's more about picking the right guy than it is picking the best guy. The right guy that fits us or any team, for that matter, is important to pick. And, you know, they do a good job at that, and it's a good collaboration. Receiver, you know, it seemed like it was one of the deeper positions here. Just what did you see of Sterling Shepard, and how much did that injury impact him? Well, early on, he showed a lot, and then he got injured and kind of missed a lot of time, you know. And that obviously has the way in it, way in on it. Hopefully, we can get him back uh, in some capacity. Because when he was fresh and he was good, he he made a lot of plays. And when you're when you're going through that process of, of which guys to hold on to and things like that, um, just how much more complicated is it when there is an injury that's involved and, and you know that there's some potential there, uh, but you know you just you weren't able to see it, you know, uh, when when it kind of mattered. Just just how much more complicated did that make things? It's complicated, but if you have you have a skill set and you've shown something, for example, Funderburg, uh, we saw him in the spring, summer, and early on when he came in, he, he's a good football player. You know, you knew right away that he had a damn good chance of making this team. So you weigh those type of things. But when you're an older guy and you get hurt, it's not so much, and it, it becomes more versatility. And you know, how versatile can you be at the back end of the roster? Special teams, this position, that position, this position. And it kind of comes down to that, because when you get injuries during the season, you have a guy that can go in and play. You can't go outside and say, hey, I got this guy. So that that's important for us. Uh, along the same lines, when did you know that Cam Johnson was a guy that could stick here? Uh, you saw it in the spring. You saw a lot of promise in the spring. Uh, he was quick in and out of his cuts, in and out of his routes. He had great hands. He runs like a running back. He, he's quick and he's sudden, and he was he was very sharp. What can you say about the job that um, the scouting department was able to do in getting some of these undrafted free agents? This is yet another year when you've got some of these guys that have made the 53-man roster. I mean, it says a lot about the work they put in. You know, it says a lot about the work they put in, the time they put in, and the meetings that we have, and everybody being on the same page, and getting these guys in here. And in this league, you can't pay everybody. You got to find some gems somehow, and we do a good job of doing that. And what about you? You know, a lot of that is also on your coaching staff, identifying these guys and, and helping them, you know, 
know, reach the potential that they're able to reach in this short amount of time? Just what can you say about the work that they've done and getting, getting some of those guys identified and kind of ready? There's a great collaboration going on, and the coaches do a good job of teaching and bringing people along. They do a good job of bringing players along and getting them better and do a good job of teaching. They, they do a great job of teaching. Uh, do you anticipate any more moves, anybody else maybe coming in, or do you think you're pretty much done, ready for the regular season? Maybe. There's a few guys who want to see what the rest of the waiver wire looks like, and we'll weigh those positions against the ones that we think we need, and we'll kind of go from there. So I'm not going to say we're done, but I'm not going to say we're going to go out and just take anybody. What's your confidence level uh, at this point in uh, Trask? He's got to fill in uh, for a month uh, and keep the ship going. Very confident in Kyle. I thought he had a good couple years here, and he's a very confident guy. He understands the offense, and he knows what he has to do, and he's a competitor. What are you guys most forward to in the regular season when it kicks off? Is there an element of this, this group that, that you really want to see uh, that you think's going to have a, have a good season? I'll be happy if we won the first game. <laughs> Is everybody that's injured right or has been injured um, still got a couple guys out? Are they all trending towards the first game, or will they be able to practice next week, do you think? I'm hoping they can. I can't say confidently, and they have some type of setback, but they're all trending the right way. Specifically, yeah, 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 yeah. Saw him out there standing on the sideline, and he was even mimicking the movements of some of his teammates that were practicing. Um, just any idea how close he is? We'll see next week. He's trending. We'll see next week. We got to keep getting him better and better, and then we'll see him next week. You saw Jordan Whitehead with the helmet warming up today as well. Was he able to practice with the full defense at all, or still kind of going along? He had a full day. I guess it's time to ask about the commanders, Todd. Um, what's your concerns there? Well, what are you wary of? Obviously, the quarterback they drafted number one, um, outstanding arm, very accurate, throws a great deep ball, knows when to get rid of the ball, can run as well. Obviously, McLaurin is another threat. They got two big D linemen in there that we're going to have to pay attention to, along with the rest of the guys I'm not even mentioning. And they got a, they got a slew of players. They got a very good coaching staff, and I know they'll be ready to play. So you, you've had three preseason games, and, and not that everyone has shown all their cards on kickoff returns, but watching what you've seen from the league in kickoff returns, how is it different in terms of, of what you populate your coverage teams and your return teams with? It was different because you had more athletes before because it wasn't that close at quarters. Now you need some power and you need some athletes at the same time. You could put more DBs on there with the regular kickoff. Now they probably got to be on the outskirts and you probably need some backers and tight ends and maybe some bigger running backs. And if you got an athletic defensive lineman or something like that, you kind of put them out there because you got got to be stout in the middle. Thank you. Yeah.